Hey guys, Kobu J here, and today we're going to be exploring how to make our very first stock scan. And we're going to be using Polygon IO to gather the data. Before we get started and jump right into the code of the project, I wanted to make sure that you guys had all the necessary requirements installed. So if you open up the description, you'll find links to all of these pipip or pypy.org links. Make sure you run all of these commands in your terminal. So for example, if I open up my command prompt here and type pip install polygon, you'll notice that all the requirements are already satisfied. Make sure you guys go ahead and do that with polygon, pandas, numpy, and talib. If you're having trouble installing talib, you can try doing it through anaconda or gathering it through the link in the description below manually. Other links in the description will include the Talib general uh, documentation so you guys can explore the technical analysis library further. And the scan we're going to be using as an example in this video is a short I found on YouTube where he uses th uh, four exponential moving averages and waits for one of them to cross top and below. We're going to have this linked in the description and we're going to be trying to emulate this in Visual Studios. So the first thing I want you to do is I want you to open up your Visual Studios and I want you to go ahead and make a new file here and I want you to call it config.py. Now in config.py if you're familiar with the other tutorials this is where we're going to be storing our keys, headers, or anything else you may need. So we're going to go ahead and say API key and is equal, equal to a string. This string can be found in polygon your dashboard scroll down copy the key go back to visual studios go ahead and paste the key save this file and let's make a new file the name of the new file will be data.py and this is where we're going to start with our imports again make sure you have all the necessary requirements installed otherwise you will not be able to follow along with the tutorial You'll notice from the other tutorials that some of these imports will be different due to the updates some of these packages have had, namely Polygon. So starting off with our imports, we'll say from Polygon, we'll import REST. And this is the difference from the older versions where we said REST client directly. Other imports we're going to need that are native to Python includes yourlib3. And from that, we'll import HTTP response. From typing, we'll also import cast. From date time or import date time, we're going to import that as dt. We're going to need to import that tallib. We're going to need to import our config file that we made. We're going to import JSON. And we're going to need to import two more things numpy as np and import pandas as pd. These should be all of the imports we need. Now we can get started on the scan. So we're going to start by creating our function. We'll say def get data. And this will be the name of our function. Real quick, I'm going to come down here and just type get data. So that way when we run our code, it actually runs the function. We're going to start off by connecting to the Polygon client. So connect to Polygon. And we're going to say client equals and we're going to say rest.restclient, and we're going to pass in that API key. So config.api key. We're going to go ahead and initialize some other lists and variables we need. So we're going to say close list, and we'll make that an empty list, and timeless, we'll make that an empty list. Now, in order for the dates we want to explore these stocks from, we can hard code them or make them dynamic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make the ending date today's date and we'll hard code the main date. So our end date of our scan will be today's date. So dt.datetime.today.date. And I believe you have to do it like this. Hmm. Pretty sure it's like that. We'll see in our, when we run the code in a minute. Now, this is where we can actually start by getting the aggregate data so aggregate data or stock data from Polygon. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to say adds equals cast. And if you're wondering what cast does, let's say enter here. 
and cast what it does is essentially it converts the data type that we'll receive from polygon and it stops it from being stored into like any so it's it doesn't error out uh, a better description will be linked in the description down below so we're going to also put HTTP response in here and this is so that we get uh, our the HTTP response is wrapped and now we can finally go in and say client.getags and ask polygon for whatever stock we choose the multiplier of one the time span so I'm going to do this on the day and our dates so we can say our starting date let's just say the start of 2022 and our end date is our coded end date and we're going to say raw is equal to true here add a comma here and save now what we'll do is we're going to store the json data so we're going to say data equals json.loads and we'll say ags.data now that we have the aggregate data stored in data if we go ahead and print this here you'll notice that we're going to get a big jumble of json so if i go ahead and expand this scroll up you'll see that here's the beginning of the json we have ticker apps the query count amount results count adjusted and the results the results is what stores the actual bar data so let's go ahead and let's get that out so in order to just get the actual bar data, we'll say the bars or all of those data is equal to data and that was stored in results. So if we go ahead and print bars, I will go ahead and run this and expand this. And you'll notice if I scroll up here, right where it started, we don't have the results, query count, adjusted, any of that, we just have the bars. Now we need to get the actual data out of the bars. So in order to get the data out of the bars, what you'll do is you can say in a for loop for bar in bars. So for each individual one of these, instead of the entire thing, we're going to be looking for a specific value. So for the values that are in bar, we want to look for C. C is our close uh, price of the stock of that day. So if the value is equal to C, we'll go ahead and we'll close list dot append that value. So that was stored in bar value. Another thing we're going to need if we type elif, we're going to say if the value is T or the timestamp data or what date and time that was, we're going to say timeless. And we're not going to just append the bar value quite yet, because if you look real close and in fact, I'll copy and paste one of these in a line that I can see, like this one. If we copy and paste, we can see that the time value is this weird number. Now that is still the date in a millisecond format. How do we take it out of the millisecond format? We'll use pandas. So we can say pd.timestamp and we can pass in the value that we were given. We can tell it that the time zone was GMT and we can give it the unit of millisecond. I'm going to go ahead and delete this comment and we'll just say converting MS timestamp to normal or to readable, whatever you would like to call it. Now that, that we have the close list and time list, we can actually print these if you guys would like. So to see what you have, so we can print the close list and we can print the time list. We can go ahead and run our application and you'll see a bunch of timestamps and a bunch of closed prices. Perfect. Now we almost have all the data we need to check for those exponential moving averages crossing. However, how do we get the exponential moving average of these closed prices? That's where talib comes into play. So we're going to say using talib to get the EMAs needed from the trading video. So in order to do this in the video, we were told we we're going to need an EMA eight. And in order to do that, we're going to say Talib EMA, we're going to pass the close list. And we'll pass the interval of eight. Now, very 
key thing here. We cannot just pass the closed list. Tala requires our array to be a numpy array. So let's go ahead and for this, let's say convert closed list into numpy array. So we're gonna say closed list equals np dot array closed list. Now that we have this, we'll take this line here and we're gonna copy and paste it down three times. So you can hold alt and shift on your keyboard and hit the down arrow three times. And in the video, we were told we're gonna need a, we're gonna just change the end here, a 13, a 21, and a 55. And change those accordingly here. So 13, 21, 55, and we have all the data we need. Now, the length of these lists are also 298, just like the rest. If you don't believe me, again, we can say, print the length of uh, EMA 13. Let's just say that. If we go ahead and print this, you'll notice 298 comes up, perfect. Now what we'll need to do is we're gonna need to, just like the video said, we're checking for, I'll comment this, checking for when the 55 crosses under all the other EMAs or above. And that will be our entrance and exit points. So in order to check this, we'll start with a simple if statement nested into a for loop. We need to check this for each individual day. So for i in range, and since I showed you all of the lengths of these are the same, you can choose any one of them or even close list. I'm going to say EMA 55. So from zero to whatever the number of EMA 55 is for you, for me, it's 298. What we're going to do is we're going to check if, and this is where a lot of parentheses and and statements will come in. We can optimize this later in a future video if that interests you guys. But for now, we're going to do this just in a very basic way where we're checking if the EMA 55 of that day crosses below the EMA 8 of that day. And what we'll do is and, and we'll copy all of this, and we'll paste it twice, get rid of the last and, and we'll change EMA 8 to 13, and we'll change EMA 8 here to 21, and colon here, and if it does so, again, you can have it return, whatever you want, go back to another function. Right now, I'm just going to print EMA 55 has crossed under all other EMAs on, and we'll put the date here. So the string of the time list, I. So, because we stored the 298 timestamps into what date they actually were, we will know for whatever date we get, we can just print it out on that day, and we should get this exact day that it crossed under. Now what we can do is we need to do this on the flip side, so elif, and what I'll do is I'll copy all of this. I'll uh oh, I'll, I'll copy all of this. I'll paste it, and I'm going to change all the less than signs to greater than signs. So I can get to this last one, change all of them, copy and paste this print statement, paste it, and just say crossed over, and have the time listed here. Now, if I go ahead and I run this script, you'll see that for all the instances where the EMA 55 has crossed over, stayed over, or under, and stayed under, we are getting a alerted to when that happened, at least in a historic standpoint. Now, something you guys can do after the fact is maybe connect this code into a socket and you can have this running live. So the moment the EMA 55 uh, crosses below, you can get an instant you know, notification as to when that happens. But for now, I hope you guys found this tutorial, tutorial helpful. I wanna thank you guys so much for helping Code Blue J hit over 100 subs. And if you guys liked the video, make sure to like it. If you disliked it, go ahead and dislike it. Sub for some more content and I'll catch you guys next time.